Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Michael DeLapa. I'm the Executive Director of Land Watch Monterey County, and thank you very much for joining us. Land Watch's mission is to enhance Monterey County's future through science, law, and grassroots advocacy. As part of our work, we host webinars and other events related to land and water use in our county. And today, we're delighted to host a presentation by the Monterey Salinas Transit about the surf busway and bus rapid transit project. Carl Sidorik, MST's CEO and general manager, and Lisa Reinheimer, MST's assistant general manager, will provide an update on the project. We'll be taking questions at the end of the presentation. If you're on the phone, please press star nine to raise your hand or lower your hand, and press star six to toggle between mute and unmute. If your video is fuzzy or you're having problems with audio, we recommend you turn your camera off. That'll uh, reduce your bandwidth uh, and, and make it easier for all of us to communicate. So on to introductions. Uh, Carl Sidorik has worked within the California public transit industry since 1988. And during that time, he has never been more than a half hour bike ride from his work to the beach. He started with MST in 2000 and has been at CEO since 2005. Carl has a uh, impressive bio, but he does note in his spare time, he is an underemployed multi-instrumentalist and volunteer martial arts instructor, which um, I take to be a good thing in our community. <laughs> Lisa Reinheimer joined MST in 2014 and in 2019 became the assistant general manager. In this role, she leads the planning, marketing, finance, facilities, and procur procurement departments. Previously, Lisa was the executive director for the Council of San Benito County Governments and the local transportation authority. She has a bachelor's degree in environmental affairs from the University of New Hampshire and executive management of, excuse me, executive master's, a public administration degree from Golden Gate University. So Carl and Lisa, please take things away. Great, thank you. Um, and first of all, thank you, Michael, for uh, giving us this, this venue. Um, this is really the first of what will be a lot of public outreach meetings over the coming year uh, as we move uh, through the design phase of this project. And we're really interested and hearing what folks have to say so that we can build the best project possible for Monterey County, uh, for people who use our services and for those frankly who don't because everyone will benefit. We do have a uh, presentation that I believe your staff is uh, uh, controlling or are we controlling it? Lisa's doing it. Lisa, why don't you share your screen and we'll get this party started. <clears throat> There you go. So here we go. So um, here we're here to talk about our surf busway and bus rapid transit project. Uh, we'll be giving you a little, you know, overview of of MST, what our values are, what we're attempting to accomplish in the community, and uh, how this project supports those values, and uh, some of the details. Uh, specific details related to the project, uh, those that we know uh, that we've heard uh, a number of public comments on uh, during while we were entering the initial design phase. And we'll talk a little bit about some of the unique features of this project. Um, and there are some things that we've, you know, through the initial interactions with the public that we've, we've made changes for the better for this project. So with that next slide, uh, you've already heard who we are. Now you know how our names are spelled. Next slide. There we go. So here, a picture is worth uh, uh, a thousand words or 10,000 automobiles. This is the problem. Um, it's not hard to figure out. Uh, Monterey County still does not have any high occupancy vehicle lanes anywhere in our county. Um, our public transit buses, which are designed to move people quickly, safely, are stuck in the same traffic with everybody else. It's hard to um, uh, really incentivize people to take transit if they're not going to get to their 
location any quicker than somebody else in, in their automobile. And here you can see uh, on a what should be a 16 minute trip. This is a, a Google Maps uh, trip that you can look at almost any day um, at certain times in the morning and the afternoon. And you can see uh, significant delays along right where our route is planned, our busway is planned. Uh, and the situation is not going to get any better. Uh, Caltrans predicts nearly a 20% increase in traffic over the next less than 20 years. Um, and that does nothing but increase greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, automobiles are the largest source of uh, non-stationary source of greenhouse gas emissions uh, in the world. Uh, and then more importantly, with our proximity to the bay, uh, automobiles are also a major factor in contributing microplastics, which wear off of the tires on our cars. And on the rare day like today, where we actually have some rain uh, in the area, those microplastics that have rubbed off onto the road are being washed directly into the bay and affecting our, our food supply, affecting the wildlife and uh, the habitat of our bay for the long term. So anything we can do to reverse reduce vehicle miles traveled is a win for greenhouse gas emissions, global climate change uh, strategies, as well as the health of our Monterey Bay Sanctuary. Next slide. So um, we are joined by uh, a number of, of agencies here who we are really thankful to have on board with us who, who see our vision. And we have them here, the city of Seaside, the transportation agency for Monterey County, who is uh, the owner of the branch line and who will be allowing us uh, the use of the branch line uh, for this project until such time that uh, future rail programs may take place. The city of San City, which we are operating through the city of Marina, uh, Caltrans, California State Parks, California State University, Monterey Bay, Blue Zones. Um, I notice we don't have the Monterey Bay Aquarium up here, but they've all, they're also a supporter of this project as well, as well as Landwatch has uh, indicated their support for this project uh, and because of the goals that we uh, have for this. Next slide. So uh, first question about, you know, what is, Bus rapid transit. Uh, bus rapid transit is a mode of transit. It's it's a part of a, a continuum uh, of if you think of uh, public transportation on a continuum as far as uh, serving various densities with various levels of service. It's it's higher quality, uh, higher passenger loads uh, than a typical bus service. And it consists of delivering fast, comfortable, very frequent services. Uh, using bus only lanes, off board fare collection, fast frequent services. It, we try, it tries to operate like a light rail. Uh, it's convenient and reliable and faster than your regular typical services. Uh, the advantages it has to over light rail is that we're rubber wheeled. So um, we can move beyond the rails. Uh, and when the rails end, uh, the buses can continue on into serving other parts of the community. Um, so bus rapid transit through using um, things like traffic signal priority and um, traffic signal coordination and uh, bus lanes, fixed guideways, we're able to avoid the delay uh, that typically slow regular bus services like being stuck in traffic. Um, and we can actually move fast, we anticipate that uh, and we have pretty good modeling statistics that when this project is built during peak periods of the morning and the evening the buses will actually travel between salinas and downtown monterey faster than automobiles traveling those same corridors next slide so um the surf uh i mean mst's vision uh is to connect all of our communities. Um, and, and, and we have a, a, a simplified vision. For, it's connecting communities, creating opportunity, and being kind to the planet. So th through a series, our long-term vision is through a series 
of uh, investments similar to what we're doing here along the bus uh, surf busway and BRT project. Um, we're extending the jazz already implemented jazz busway. Uh, I'm sorry, jazz BRT project that included some of the traffic signal coordination and traffic signal prioritization that allows our buses to move more quickly through those corridors. We're extending that through Marina. And then for the future, we'll be looking along the uh, uh, Imgen Davis multimodal corridor, uh, doing uh, uh, bus lanes out through Salinas, uh, out through the Alisal area so to some of our most disadvantaged communities in the county. And then uh, potentially uh, bus on shoulder uh, type of, of operations. And this is long, much longer term through the South County communities down through King City. So by connecting those communities, uh, we're able to create opportunity for persons uh, without automobiles or per persons who don't want to drive and, and uh, we can provide opportunities for them to access jobs, access medical care, access educational opportunities um, throughout the region and create opportunities to improve their lives through improved mobility. Um, lack of mobility uh, has been shown to be a major contributor um, to people not being able to uh, do all that they can with their potential. And those communities that have uh, fast, frequent, available services are able to move people from poverty into more productive states uh, and better, uh, better lifestyle um, by having these opportunities to use transit to get access to education and access to jobs earlier in their lives. Um, this is also allows us to be kind to the planet by uh, uh, using transit, um, regardless of your fuel source, it's already an improvement over single vehicle occupancy. Uh, and even if you're driving electric vehicles, um, you still have the wear and tear on the tires and the creation of microplastics that are getting in, currently getting into the water table, even with zero emission vehicles. So with MST's plan to be 100% zero emission um, hydrogen fuel cell and battery electric uh, by 2040 or before, we will be utilizing existing uh, vehicles that are zero emission. We currently have uh, funding in place to purchase more zero emission vehicles. And we have a funding plan to begin transitioning our fleet and getting the infrastructure in place. So that again, um, we will be having a, a probably one of the, the largest fleets of zero emission uh, uh, vehicles in the Central Coast region between Santa Cruz all the way down to Santa Barbara. Uh, by the time we're done, we will have the largest fleet of zero emission public transit vehicles in that five, six county area. Next slide. So the big picture for the surf um, uh, is a six mile long busway and bus rapid transit line that will bypass a uh, highway one. Um, it will be built along these existing um, rail corridor that's been in place since 1871, I believe was when the rail corridor was first established. Uh, we will be maintaining the um, uh, rail in place for future rail use should uh, population density uh, require that we need to, to move beyond. And this will be des designed in such a way that the bus rapid transit system would be able to continue to operate at some point in the future, some unknown point in the future, when rail becomes a viable solution, that the rail will be able to be built and the bus rapid transit system will still be able to be able to operate um, while that's happening. So a lot of thought has gone into the design of this process uh, and project. And I'm going to allow Lisa uh, and really go hand this over to Lisa at this point uh, to get more into the actual details of what features and amenities that the surf busway and BRT will have. So Lisa, why don't you take it away? Great, thanks Carl. And thanks everyone for joining on your lunch break. Um, it's a pleasure to present this project to you. And I think what you'll find is 
that the things that Michael had initially introduced and Carl had said, I'm going to elaborate on. So one of our uh, key vision statements is being kind to our planet. And so um, what Land Watch works to do as well is enhance Monterey County's future by addressing climate change, community health, and social inequities in housing and transportation. And you'll see throughout the rest how closely the SURF project aligns with that vision. So our project reduces greenhouse gas emissions. We estimate that'll reduce um, GHG emissions by 1200 metric tons annually. That's huge. We are also further reducing emissions through our zero emission buses that will be operating on the surf as we also transition our entire fleet, as Carl mentioned, um, to zero emissions by 2040. We're also partnering with um, environmental groups on uh, dunes, habitat restoration, and replacing um, you know, some of the native species that will be um, removed during construction and placing and enhancing preservation areas in a place that's more um, appropriate for species and allows them to grow and thrive in those preservation areas. Uh, we'll also be removing during construction um, some ice plant and invasive species, which is a good thing in the dunes area. Uh, that ice plant can be pretty pervasive. We'll be maintaining the visual character of the area and the scenic vistas and also reducing microplastics that flow to the bay as, as uh, Carl had mentioned. We're also connecting our communities and over the next couple of slides, I'll get into a little bit of the detail here with regard to biking, walking and recreation. Uh, we are including a total of one mile extension of the Beach Range Road Trail. And we've included safety features for bicycle and pedestrian um, crossings. This one in particular, you can see in Marina, this is the extension of Beach Range Road from the under, the overpass will be under the overpass, <laughs> um, connecting to um, Del, Mon on Del Monte uh, at uh, Palm. And then the city of Marina asked us to include a better crossing from the extension of Beach Range Road Trail to Rain Dollar. So that was a great um, suggestion as we were doing our community outreach that the city leaders wanted that connection there. Uh, so we've included that. And we also know that these extensions of uh, the trail as well as the surf service um, allows better access to for disadvantaged community areas. We're including a new bus mobility hub at Fifth Street Station. This is property that MST owns from the former Fort Ord days. Um, this was uh, given over to MST from the Army, and we're including it as a multimodal mobility hub um, in the former Fort Ord, connecting our services to CSUMB, the dunes, the military neighborhoods, the DOD clinic, et cetera. Um, and we're also maintaining the, the bike and ped trail that goes underneath the highway and connecting it to First Street as well. And then the extension of Beach Range Road um, in the south um, to the Monterey Peninsula Rec Trail. Currently, there's a crossing at Beach Range Road that connects to the Caltrans Trail. And then you have to go underneath the highway and then back on to the trail to the west. We're correcting that. You can still go on the other side uh, later on, but we're keeping the trail on the west side. And then creating opportunities, um, our bus service will be improved with more frequent, fast, reliable service. This is something that is important to transit riders. The most important things for attracting people to public transportation are frequent and reliable bus service. So not only will this benefit our existing riders, but it will have the opportunity to attract more riders to get folks off the road and onto public transportation. 
We're also um, supporting affordable housing and local businesses. Um, affordable housing is important for public transportation because it relies on public transit to support those housing developments. And then finally on this one, I wanted to mention that we're including signal improvements in Marina and Seaside and Sand City areas for better traffic flow. So even if you don't use public transportation, if you have a car and you're going through Marina, that traffic signal improvements will help better um, get people moving through Marina. And so moving on to the funding that is um, set aside and uh, future, we have pre-construction dollars at 7.2 million that's already secured. We're estimating construction costs at 50 million. Measure X has provided the seed money for us from the um, vote from 2016 of 15 million dollars. It's really helped us leverage other state funding, the state transit and inner city rail capital program, a very, very competitive program. And we were just awarded $25 million from that program uh, for this project. And even more competitive, we received recently a state budget earmark from Senator Laird for 2.5 million. So we're actively then seeking the rest of the funding needed uh, through state and federal grants at $14.7 million. And I'm sure you're interested in the project timeline. The initial planning uh, and environmental studies preliminary design um, has been complete. The MSD board approved the project last year and we launched into final design this year, early this year. Uh, marching towards 60% design. And part of that effort is to also hear from the public and community about you know, some enhancements or ideas they have to better uh, plan this project. So as we're moving forward, we're looking targeting 2024 to start construction and then welcome aboard in 2027. So here's how you can get involved. We have an open house scheduled for August 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. It's at the Carpenters Union Hall um, in Marina. And it's really, the, the format is that we'll have different tables and it's your opportunity to get into some of the details. We have, we will have an updated simulation. We have a video simulation um, group on our consulting team that are updating the one that we had before to show the new and improved designs. And it's an opportunity to get into some of the details about the project at different areas um, with um, subject matter experts, our design team, et cetera. There's also an opportunity, if you can't get to that meeting, I totally get it, we're all busy, but there's also an opportunity to provide comments and feedback on our community input hub. You don't have to copy that down, although I'm sure um, Michael can send this presentation. It's just mst.org, super easy. It's right front and center on our webpage and you can um, get linked into the community input hub. So you can also stay tuned on social media with our Twitter and Facebook pages. Um, but to also enhance this project, we just kicked off a new transit oriented development study that will support the surf line. And we're um, going to be looking at the areas of uh, Monterey, Seaside, Sand City, Marina and Salinas to see how the um, city's plans um, can support transit oriented development. We'll provide suggestions for better, um, possibly ordinances or planning efforts to support this surf line. And then we're also coordinating and supporting the city of Marina's downtown vitalization plan. And that's it. And we welcome your questions and comments. 
Well, thank you uh, very much, Lisa and Carl. And if folks have questions, now is the time to uh, to put them in the chat or to raise your hand. I see um, a question from Annie Nodoff, who happens to be the Land Watch board chair, and she asks, "What do project demand forecasts look like?" So Lisa or Carl, you want to take that? Lisa. Sure. I think she yeah. means ridership demand, what we're expecting. Yes, ridership demand, yes. Okay. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, well, we did an initial study. Um, well, not, sorry, not an initial study, a feasibility study, <clears throat> excuse me, in 2017. And um, that study projected at start about just under 500,000 passengers on an annual basis. That being said, in our um, application to um, the Federal Transit Administration, we're working on a more robust mm -hmm. modeling effort and they will not provide funding to us unless the ridership um, projections support um, the, the funding request. So at minimum, it's just under 500,000 annually. Again, what people want and what ridership um, success looks like is frequent, reliable uh, public transportation. Great. Um, I want to note that Carl put a link in the chat, which uh, I assume takes you to the data on the um, MST website for demand uh, projections. Uh uh, it is a link to our um, social media to learn more about the project. It is not a link okay. to the demand. Okay. Okay. Um, and, you know, one of the, you know, Carl and, and Lisa both mentioned it. One of the things that Landwatch is excited about is, you know, obviously the reduction of greenhouse gases. <clears throat> um, there are, uh, in coordination with the regional housing needs allocations to Monterey County, which is going to increase the number of homes uh, on the peninsula in excess of, you know, 3,000, 4,000 and countywide, you know, 6,000. I mean, this is exactly the kind of, uh, of alternatives we need to cars. And it's, you know, absolutely critical for anyone who's concerned with greenhouse gas uh, reductions and climate change to get, <clears throat> um, you know, to be promoting things like walking, walking biking and mass transit. So, um, you know, we're excited to see a project come along that um, is offering up as many benefits um, to uh, all the communities in Monterey County. Potentially, I think that vision is, is that you have is extraordinary. I mean, if we can connect the valley and the peninsula, <clears throat> make it easy for people to get to their jobs, schools, that's great. Um, Carl, a question from Chris uh, Dumich. Did you say that MST is gonna be 100% ZEV by what year? 2040. By or 2040, before. or and, before, or I mean, before 2040. 20, yeah, 2040 is is you know we're we're shooting for it before, but we will be there by 2040. Okay, um, Melanie, you said there's somebody with their hand raised. Um, yes, we have somebody with the name Guest. So I will unmute or ask them to unmute. Click the button in the center of the screen, and then you should be good to go. Okay, great. And if guests could tell us who they are, that would be terrific. Hey, good afternoon. Brian McCarthy, I'm a candidate for City Council Marina. I'm using a device I don't usually use, so I apologize. Um, <clears throat> two quick questions. Um, one is, I've always been surprised that there's no easy transit options to the airport. And so I'm wondering if that was considered as part of this plan. Um, and then the second question is, was there any cell phone um, signal analysis done during this uh, along this bus route. And it's kind of a trick question. I can tell you there's some severe um, dead zones, but are there opportunities to um, improve that as part of this project? So first qu clarifying, uh, Marina Airport, the business park, or are you talking Monterey Regional Airport? Monterey Regional Airport. Okay. Um, for this project, we were not considering necessarily connections directly to the Monterey Airport. We've just completed a um, comprehensive operational analysis called the Better Bus Network uh, that we'll be implementing uh, in phases beginning in December. I you know, can't tell you off the top of my head 
uh, where service is going to end up uh, for the Monterey Airport and that. But uh, maybe we can get some information in the chat box on that, Lisa, as far as the the comprehensive operational analysis. Uh, in the feasibility study, Lisa, um, can you speak to how we uh, use data and where we got data from uh, that helped us determine where this project was first going to be built? Sure, um, I should mention too that um, as a former director of planning for MST, we've continually grappled with the requests for services to the Monterey Airport. And the challenge that we have is that the airlines don't have consistent you know, services going out of and into, and that's where public transportation does best when it's, you know, on the hour, every hour. Um, so it's it's a challenge for sure, but we keep that in the back of our minds for when there's an opportunity to better serve the airport. That being said, you can always transfer <laughs> from downtown Monterey using a taxi or Uber or something like that. That'll provide a, a, a decent connection between Salinas and Monterey. Um, okay, so signal analysis, um, cell signal analysis. Are you wondering if we're going to include cell towers or are you? No, I think he was asking, okay. did we use cell data? And I believe we did. Yeah. And yeah, I, yeah. Know, I know you have the a little more, you were more closely, worked more closely with that yeah. piece of the project than I did. So that's why I was kind of handing it off to you because I, I know we did. I just don't recall all the details. Right, so with our feasibility study that we did in 2017, we used INRIX data, which is cell-based information about traffic congestion. Uh, so they pull information from cell um, usage to show congestion in certain corridors. And we found that, <laughs> this is gonna come as a huge shocker for anybody that goes along the corridor, um, hint, hint, not a shocker that there's significant congestion between Marina and uh, Seaside, Sand City, Monterey area in the morning. Um, specifically at that time in 2016, it was between the hours pretty much of 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Um, and projecting out into the future, the traffic will, the congestion will become more severe in terms of travel speeds, we found that the slowest speed was nine miles per hour at certain times. And then the, um, the length. So instead of being 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., maybe it's 6.30 to 9.30 a.m. So over time, as the region grows, traffic will become worse. Then in the evening p.m. time, because we took a look at from Carpenter on the top of Highway 68 uh, near Chomp all the way to Castroville. And what we found was the afternoon peak from Carpenter all the way through to about the Home Depot area is super congested as well. Great. Um I see David Burnett with his hand up. Uh, David, let me, uh, you need to unmute and then you're ready to go. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Michael. Uh, I know Carl and uh, Lisa are probably tired of hearing from me at this point. Um, uh, I wanted to ask uh, Lisa on your presentation, uh, you spent some time talking about the uh, trail interface uh, on uh, Ryan Dollar in Marina. Uh, could you go into a little more detail? I'm hearing uh, some comments from folks uh, here in Marina uh, that they would really like to get more details and know the opportunities that they can uh, make comments or, or offer alternate designs for the uh, uh, bus, bicycle, pedestrian, interface uh, as you envision it. And uh, my concern or my question is um, the, uh, uh, I guess there's going to be some uh, buildup of a roadway uh, on the west side of the track. So there's, there's going to be some augmentation of the uh, hillside there in some way to support um, uh, the trail. 
is my understanding. Uh, well, anyway, could you go into some more detail about that? I'd really appreciate it. And, and for the folks in Marina that are uh, on this call today, uh, I am your uh, MST uh, rep with the city of Marina. And uh, uh, please always contact MST directly if you have questions. But uh, if you have some more concerns, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at the uh, city offices. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't know, Council Member Burnett or Director Burnett. Um, uh, at this meeting, he's, I believe, David Burnett because okay. he's, we haven't we haven't had a roll call or a. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, thank you, David. I appreciate the comment. So I'll I'll just refer to this map um, to the degree that I can get detailed for you. Um, so the Beach Range Road uh, bicycle and pedestrian trail essentially ends right about here. The Caltrans Rec Trail runs through, let's see, on this. So, okay. So the, the solid orange line is the surf busway infrastructure portion. That's what the buses would be using um, to get around traffic. Then there's the Caltrans rec trail that goes right along there and then um, to the right next to Del Monte and then connects across the railroad tracks right about here to connect into Beach Range Road, but also continues to the south along the Caltrans Trail. What this project is doing is closing off this um, connection right here and moving it to a more logical location at Rain Dollar. So this section of Beach Range Road would be extended with a similar trail um, with asphalt and what have you um, along the west side of the busway all the way to Palm and Del Monte. And then along here, you're correct, there is uh, some grade difference between the railroad tracks and Marina Drive. So there's retaining wall located about right here to, um, to hold up the new trail. Um, and then the city of Marina folks wanted us to connect across um, right here so that folks can A, get across um, at Rain Dollar, but also uh, connect into that extension of the Beach Range Road Trail. So hopefully that answers your question, David. Okay, so um, we have in my lineup right now a question in chat from Susie Wooster that I will ask, then uh, Lynn Hamilton, Howard, Lisbeth with her hand up, and then a follow-up from Brian. So Susie Wooster's question is, are there plans to have a direct bus line from Sand City to the Monterey Transit Center? She comments that Jazz comes by regularly but has many stops. If there are direct slash nonstop lines between Salinas to Marina or the new Ford Ord 5th Street Nexus and Sand City to Monterey, it could be very fast for people to get to jobs. So the question is, is there a direct bus line from Sand City to the Monterey Transit Center? The, sur the surf line as configured, um, is currently our line 20 um, and it will be more express. So yes, when, when the bus exits the bus way, um, the buses will continue all the way to the Monterey Transit Plaza uh, along Del Monte Avenue. So uh, there'll be a stop at Sand City and then it will continue on directly to um, the Monterey Transit Plaza. So I believe that answers the question. And I think that gets a, a thumbs up from Susie Wooster, <clears throat> okay. who is a former Land Watch board member. Um, next you question is from us. yeah. <laughs> uh, next question is from Lynn Hamilton. How will the existing rec trail be impacted between Seaside and Marina? It will not. Uh, there are two of them, of course. 
the Caltrans rec trail that goes directly next to Highway 1, and then the Beach Range Road, the sort of newer rec trail on State Park's property, that stays as is. What so, about at Fifth Street Station? I, I, aren't we making some improvements to the trail there as far as the bikes? Yeah, so the at Fifth Street Station, existing condition is that the Caltrans rec trail goes underneath the highway and connects over to 8th Street, um, sort of along Highway 1 and the Transportation Agency for Monterey County TMZ property, um, where we just took down a whole bunch of old dilapidated hazardous material laden buildings. Um, so that will largely stay the same. We'll, can, we'll move the bike trail um, just a little bit so that we can include the busway portion of it, but the bike trail essentially has very little impact. And then we're also connecting that trail into First Street um, along the MST property. Um, so it's what I wanted to do specifically um, after taking a BRT workshop um, and conference is they said, listen, if you're gonna do these BRT projects, you really have to consider the connections for bicyclists and pedestrians. And to the degree that you can enhance, enhance them, the better off you're gonna be. So I took that to heart. And from the get-go, um, we've talked about enhancing and making sure that those bicycle and pedestrian connections are at least stay the same or enhanced. And I think what we've done here is we've enhanced them tremendously compared to what you have right now today. And we're also envisioning a self-serve bicycle repair station at the Fifth Street Station. So, um, you know, you'll be able to, uh, you know, repair your bikes. There'll be, you know, vending uh, areas. So if you need some compressed air uh, or other supplies will be there and uh, the ability to, you know, an, an area that, uh, you know, minor bike repairs um, can be made at Fifth Street Station. So, you know, it's, we're not looking at the Fifth Street Station as a transit center. We're trying to get away from that terminology and we're looking more at what we call mobility hubs. So we're designing them with, you know, uh, zero emission vehicle charging, uh, the ability for uh, TNCs like Ubers and Lyfts to be their uh, substantial bike and ped uh, 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 amenities so that it's, it's more than just the bus. Even though MST is building it, we're designing it for all mobility alternatives, including bus, pedestrian, bike, and shared ride options will be that hub at Fifth Street Station. I'm sorry, a little more than around what about bikes, but I think it's an important uh, that we hit on that. Yeah, you're getting lots of thumbs up. I just wanted to clarify, you're going to be staffing the bike repair, Carl? Is that right? It'll be self-serve. No, no by me, you, per, you personally, no? Oh, me personally. I don't think you want me doing that. <laughs> okay. So uh, next question from Howard uh, Fossler. Can we assume the project is not currently qualified for federal funding, what will take it to qualify? What will uh, it take? It is qualified for federal funding. Um, we just haven't qualified for federal funding. We, uh, there were some grant uh, announcements relays, released earlier this, I guess, last, last week. Um, and 80% uh, of the money from that particular source raised grants went to highway projects. Um, hmm. and, and we just did not make the cut, um, the raise grant program. Uh, we feel that we're very well qualified to, uh, uh, we are, we are listed in the, uh, capital improvement grant program under the federal transit administration as an eligible project. And we will be submitting an application within the next week or so. Uh, and we'll find out in, uh, March, whether that's successful, uh, but this uh, the bipartisan infrastructure bill poured an unprecedented amount of money into this program. So we are very well suited, I believe, to from this uh, uh, 
this program to actually receive funding because this is limited to these types of projects. Bus rapid transit projects um, is what this project is for. And, and we've been very well received at the federal level. Uh, they've seen our videos. They've seen how we're working in the multimodal uh, bike head shared ride capabilities. They really like it. They're just waiting on our application. So Great. we're keeping our fingers crossed until uh, when the president releases his budget that week, we'll know. So it should be uh, early March, late February. Terrific. Um, Elizabeth, you are up next. If you could please unmute. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, I'm Lisbeth Visser, resident of Marina, and I'm running for uh, city council in District 4, which includes the dunes. So I did have a question about the 5th Street station, and I'm happy that it was just explained that it will be called a mobility hub. I'm very happy with that because, of course, it's very important to have connections to local destinations. And if I'm not mistaken, there's also a maintenance yard scheduled in Marina in that area. And if that's the case, can you please describe what that will look like and what the potential um, impact will be for that area? And I'm thinking about hours of operation with potential um, noise, noises. So thank you very much. Yeah, I think you'll be happy to know that there is no maintenance yard scheduled for that area, not with our project. I'm not certain what project you may be referring to. I believe in the old Tamsi light rail scenario, there may have been a light rail maintenance yard uh, scheduled in that, uh, envisioned in that area uh, for the rail cars, but um, our MST buses will be maintained at our, our Monterey and Salinas operating divisions. Um, so we at our Fifth Street station is strictly is strictly mobility uses only. Thank so, you very much. I will yeah. pass that on to the concerned residents. It must have been old information. I I but think so. I think a, a lot. I mean, and really old. I'm I'm going to say probably 15 years old. That information. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So I have a follow up question from Brian McCarthy, um, who clarifies. Actually, I was asking if cell infrastructure would be included much like city metros trains ensure coverage by working with providers to put towers and tunnels, et cetera. There's a severe dead zone spot uh, the city of Marina has struggled to address that will affect all bus riders. So. Lisa, I don't believe that's something that's come up before. So we will put that in our list of items to consider. We certainly are dependent, uh, MST, uh, especially with our new contactless uh, payment systems. All those transactions are, are wireless transactions. So we are dependent. Although when we hit a dead zone, those units have the ability to store the data. And then when it we hit a, you know, a connection, it all forwards. So, uh, but uh, that is something that we will look at and listen to the community. Okay. On, 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 on what the appetite is for something like that. Yes, and as a Marina resident traveling through that area, I agree, there is a, a challenge with the cell coverage there. I always tell my folks that I'm talking to, hey, I'm going through Marina, I may lose you. So yeah, we'll, we'll look into it. Great. Um, Melanie Schlotterbach, who is Landwatch's uh, consultant, asks, has MST considered an advanced mitigation program to, st to streamline project permits, reduce staff time, project costs, and budgets while sim simultaneously protecting important landscapes? Yeah, so I will attempt to address that. Um, I know TMC has um, some advanced mitigation work that they've been um, uh, endeavoring on. I'm not sure that that's necessarily a great fit for the specifics of our particular project, but I will say that we have um, been in touch with California State Parks for the Fort Ord Dunes State Park area, as well as the regional park area. There's a Marina Dunes Preserve area that um, we're in communication about, you know, having an opportunity to 
replant and establish uh, native species, those that are threatened or endangered, so that we can um, have a better place for plants to thrive and grow rather than on a disturbed old rail line um, that's not terribly suited for the plants that are there. So if you have some specific ideas in terms of a uh, advanced mitigation program, I'm all ears and I'd love to uh, touch base with whoever may be in charge of that. And we can, we can certainly have a conversation. And we, we have also applied for enhanced environmental, uh, enhanced environmental mitigation project funds through the state. We were ultimately uh, not selected. Um, just you know, they wanted to see that last bit of federal funds um, allocated to the project before they were willing to give us any more state funds for the enhan enhanced environment environmental mitigation. But, but that's something that we can also, you know, we can come back to that program later. Uh, you know, assuming we're successful in March we may have an opportunity to reapply through that program as well. But any specific plans or strategies that Landwatch may have, please forward them to us and we'd be happy to take them under advisement. Great, I'll connect you with uh, Melanie after this. Uh, I see a hand from Elizabeth Madrigal, my colleague who is with the Monterey Bay Economic Partnership uh, and works with us on housing. And Elizabeth, Good afternoon, all. I'm so sorry if you cannot hear me well. I'm actually on transit right now. <laughs> but I just wanted to ask you all, um, has there been any talk of this bus rapid, rapid transit kind of serving as a regional connection? I know before there was the Monterey Santa Cruz bus line, um, which I and several of my friends missed dearly. I'm just wondering if there's been any sustained collaboration with Santa Cruz Metro in terms of this bus rapid transit, just serving as a connector between Monterey and Santa Cruz counties sometime in the future. Thanks. Yeah, with the um, with uh, the new uh, CEO uh, Michael Tree, who um, just came on board at Santa Cruz Metro in the past several months, and then just within the past maybe year um, and a half, perhaps. Uh, VTA, Santa Clara VTA has a new CEO, um, uh, Carolyn Gannott. Um, I, I hate to say it, but I've become the old timer in the region. Um, and uh, But we are now on a quarterly meeting basis. This is not something that we've historically have done, but I've been able to get these folks to com uh, commit to meeting together quarterly as CEOs. And this is at least the uh, connection uh, from uh, Monterey County to Gilroy, uh, that is a priority for us because we do, we make a connection into Santa Cruz County to Watsonville, the first urban area uh, in that we come through in Watsonville. We go to Paso Robles, the first urban area in San Luis Obispo County. And I'd like to at least get to as far as Gilroy and Santa Clara so that we can have that interface. And then from those locations, those counties transit operators can implement, you know, fast frequent service um, to their uh, city centers of their counties. Okay. Um, I don't see any additional hands or questions. Um, so um, I think this is a good time to wrap up. And um, I want to thank both you, Carl and Lisa, and everyone who participated with great questions. We're excited to watch the project develop and, um, you know, take people out of, get, give people an opportunity to get out of their cars and you guys, you know, keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Again, really appreciate the opportunity. I really appreciate the great questions that were put to us. And please continue to ask questions. Um, we want to build the best project for this county. And um, we don't get opportunities to do something like this, especially in a small urban rural area. This is a generational opportunity for to really make huge improvements um, that will have lasting significant impacts to climate change and, and, and what we do. And it really matters. So we want to get it done right. 
So we really, really appreciate your input. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank both. Thank, thank everyone for uh, joining us.